Good afternoon, Dunkirk and Fredonia listeners, and welcome to High Noon Friday, Fredonia's longest-running variety radio program, brought to you by WCVF 88.9 The Voice and WDVL 89.5 The Inferno. I'm Alex Irwin. And I'm Jackson DiCaprio. <laughs> Today's episode is available streaming worldwide at FredoniaRadio.com. Coming up, we will have news, sports, and weather. But first, campus news. On Wednesday, April 6th, an international panel of speakers from Europe will be hosting the next Brown Bag Lecture. The panelists will be teaching a lecture titled Some Aspects in the European Union Higher Education System, Challenges and Achievements. Dr. Mincheva is currently serving as a Williams Visiting Professor at SUNY Fredonia and will be leading the panelists in the discussion. The event is free and open to the public and will be held in the Williams Center in room S204 on Wednesday, April 6th. Tomorrow, a spring formal will be held in the Williams Center from 8 p.m. until midnight. The event is organized by the Resident Assistant Advisory Board and will be Alice in Wonderland themed. There will be dancing, snacks, and beverages, and 10 lucky students will get to take home a raffle basket. There will be a secret grand prize revealed at the event. Music will be provided by DJ Magic, sophomore communication media manager John Maternowski, Guests are expected to dress in semi-formal attire. Tickets are $5 in the Fredonia Ticket Office in the Williams Center. The newest edition of The Leader is out. This week's issue features an update on the Kirshner situation, the removal of Google Workspace data and accounts, a photo gallery of the BSU fashion show, a review of the recent North Pole strip club shows, an update on Fredonia sports, and more. Pick up a copy of the paper for free from any academic building and in select locations around campus. Thank you so much, Alex. Today we'll be interviewing Professor Ivani Vassler about an upcoming event, and we'll be having our classically chaotic segment, Trivia, Slightly After 12. We'll also be listening to a few of our weekly segments, such as Just the Facts and Nature Speaks. Let's start with our local news and sports, prepared by Cassia Fonseca and Trevor Howard, followed by our resident weather girl, weather update prepared in red by Jules Hopeding. What's going on, Cassio? Good afternoon, Fredonia. I'm Cassio Fonseca, and well... Another week, another high noon Friday, local news update. Let's get right into it. In local news for this week, in accordance with the latest New York State Department of Health guidance, Brooks TLC Hospital System has loosened some of their restrictions for inpatient visitation. Effective immediately, visitation is from noon to 6 p.m. daily, with two persons allowed at a time in non-COVID-19 patient rooms. Previously, visitation had been from 3 to 6 p.m., with one designated visitor allowed per room per day. Persons visiting any of the campuses for outpatient services and or diagnostics may once again bring one designated support person to accompany them. Patients in the emergency department will continue to be allowed one designated support person to accompany them. Additional persons are not allowed to wait in the waiting room. As a reminder, those persons visiting for adult surgery services may have one designated person for initial intake who may rejoin at discharge. Pediatric surgery patients may have two designated persons accompanying them. In an end-of-life case, if deemed end-of-life by a provider and is anticipated within 24 hours, two designated persons will be permitted in all areas, including COVID-19 patient rooms. All visitors, whether visiting inpatients or on campuses for outpatient procedures or diagnostics, must wear a mask over the mouth and nose for the duration of their visit. Visitors must continue to enter through the outpatient entrance near the emergency department entrance and will continue to be screened upon their entrance. All visitors are also required to show a government-issued form of identification at the screener desk. In other local news for this week, the public share of the cost of building and operating a new stadium for the Buffalo Bills will exceed $1.1 billion once long-term maintenance costs are factored in, according to documents which were released on Wednesday. Governor Kathy Hochul proposed a deal on Monday in which state and county governments would pay $850 million toward the estimated $1.4 billion cost of building the stadium in a Buffalo suburb. Those figures, though, only covered construction costs. The team's lease agreement would also require the state to pay into a fund to keep the new building in Orchard Park in tip-top shape, according to a 14-page memorandum released by the Hochul administration. That would include $100 million paid out over 15 years for any needed maintenance and repairs, plus at least an additional $180 million for capital improvements paid out over 30 years. 
Actual annual estate payments for the capital fund may be higher, adjusted upward based on the consumer price index. Together, the state and county payments would make up one of the largest public subsidies ever given to a new NFL stadium. Hochul, a Democrat, Bills fan, and Buffalo area native, has heralded the deal as a boon for Western New York, and it would tie the team to Buffalo for at least 30 years. Others have assailed it as a wasteful giveaway of taxpayer dollars to the team's owners, billionaires Terry and Kim Pagula, whose fortune is linked to natural gas fracking. Another Hochul primary opponent, U.S. Rep. Tom Suozzi, criticized both the amount of the subsidy and the speed at which the state legislature is being asked to approve the process. The deadline for passing a new state budget is today, April 1st. More than $418 million of the state's $600 million share will come from a delayed casino-related payment from the Seneca Nation, the government said late Tuesday. Erie County will pay $250 million toward the project. The payment from the Seneca Nation covers a share of revenue over five years from three of the tribe's Western New York casinos. The tribe stopped payments in 2017, saying its obligation to share revenue with state and localities had expired. The Seneca Nation Council ended the years-long payment dispute with the state this week by authorizing the transfer of $565 million that had been held in escrow. Under the deal proposed by Hochul, New York State and Erie County would be allowed to hold some events at the stadium when the bills aren't using it, though they will be required to use the bill's authorized vendors to sell any tickets. The bills will have to pay an annual rent of $900,000 that will go into the Capital Improvement Fund. That's all for local news this week, and it is great to be back in the station alive and well. Thanks again to everyone who came out to our event last Friday and helped to find me. Have a great weekend, Fredonia. Hello, everyone. My name is Trevor Howard here with your High Noon Friday sports update. In the NFL, the NFL draft is now less than one month away, and teams are scouting the top levels of NCAA football like crazy to fill out their mock draft boards in their war rooms. The Jacksonville Jaguars for back-to-back -back seasons will have the number one overall pick in the draft. In the MLB, baseball is back and better than ever, and spring training is almost completed as we approach opening day on April 7th. Major League Baseball will play a 162-game season, with each team playing two doubleheaders in their schedule, making up for the lost time during the lockout. And in the NHL, your local Buffalo Sabres are actually making watching hockey in western New York fun again. In March, the Sabres have a record of 8-3-2, and are currently 11th in the standings for the month of March alone. Last Monday, the Sabres made franchise history coming back from a 4-0 deficit against the Chicago Blackhawks to win the game 6-5 in regulation. This was the first time the Sabres won a game after being down 4-0 since January 1st, 1989. You've been listening to your sports update on High Noon Friday on WCVF 88.9 The Voice and WDVL 89.5 The Inferno. The Northern Chautauqua Weather Update, being brought to you by Fredonia Radio Systems. Good afternoon, Fredonia. It's your resident weather girl here, Jules Hopeting, bringing you the week and forecast. So, I couldn't think of a good intro at 1.30 in the morning when I wrote this here weather report. So, I'm just going to jump right into how it will go with the highs and the lows and the winds and the precipitations and the clouds. Today, predominantly sunny, high near 78, wind 3 to 5 miles per hour. Tonight, sunniness continues, low near 65. Tomorrow, sunniness continues to continue, high near 80, wind 5 miles per hour, carrying the scent of dandelions and peaches and barbecued shrimp. Tomorrow night, rain expected around 6 p.m., then sunshine at 7 p.m., resulting in a triple rainbow in the sky, low around 70. Sunday, sunshine is out again, high near 81, light breeze carrying the effects of Lake Erie's eutrophication and dead fish into your nostrils. Oh, wait, that's just the Purina factory. Sunday night, more sunshine, low around 70. Come nightfall, thirsty mosquitoes buzzing in your bushes. And that concludes your weekend weather report. That's right, folks, nearly three whole days of sunshine in April. Crazy, right? If I didn't know any better, I'd say someone was trying to fool me with that there weather report. <laughs> right? Wait a minute. Okay, I'm in it. I lied. I have fulfilled your daydreams, but not made a fool out of anyone. Here is the real weather report today. 
<laughs> Snow showers likely, mainly before 2 p.m. Cloudy with a high near 37. Breezy with a west wind 16 to 21 miles per hour with gusts as high as 34. Chance of precipitation is 70%. Tonight, cloudy during the evening, then gradual clearing with a low around 28. Wind 10 to 18 miles per hour with gusts as high as 30. Tomorrow, sunny with a high near 44. Wind 5 to 8 miles per hour, so actually not that bad at all. Tomorrow night, slight chance of rain showers before 11 p.m., then a chance of rain and snow showers between 11 p.m. and 3 a.m., then snow showers likely after 3 a.m., mostly cloudy with a low around 33. Sunday, chance of snow showers before 9 a.m., then the chance of rain showers, predominantly cloudy with a high near 43. Sunday night, mostly cloudy with a low around 31. And that concludes your real weekend weather report. Be on guard today, folks, because your puffy winter coat that you, you are annoyed that you still have to wear this time of year can only protect you from the cold. Old. I'll pass the hot mic back to the host now. Wow, what a wacky weather report. Thanks so much, Casino Never and Rules. Next up is Just the Facts. Welcome back to Just the Facts, where we talk about just facts, only facts, no opinions, just facts. I'm your host today, Alex Irwin, along with my friends Chloe. Hello. And Hunter. Hey, hello. It is a very special episode of Just the Facts today because. When this is airing, guys, it's going to be April Fool's. We're recording a bit beforehand because guess who's not going to be here on April Fool's Day? Alex. It's Alex. Alex isn't going to be here. No. Alex is going to be at a wedding in North Carolina. That is going to be Hunter and Chloe at no. a wedding in North Carolina. <laughs> Stupid North Carolina. It's not even the best North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, it is because it's the only North Carolina. <laughs> North Carolina is... At the same time, the best North Carolina and the worst. That's true. It's not actually about North Carolina. It is about wacky pranks, though, since it is April Fool's. And Hunter, I would like to hear your wacky prank first, personally. So, my wacky prank. I didn't want to look anything up because I feel felt like I wanted to make this more personal. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. there was one time. Uh, Alex had this tendency, I live with him, to stay out late at night. Because I'm busy. I'm a busy human being. Sometimes it'd be two in the morning, yes. three in the morning, yeah. four in the morning. I'm... There was one that was five or six in the morning. Yeah, that was a long day. Alex, um, that's really silly. Of nonetheless, you. me and the other guys that live with us, we uh, abused this fact. And Chloe was also there. I was there. I was the lookout. You were an accomplice. No. We got into his room because he didn't <laughs> lock his door. And we took any everything off his, like, sh big. he has a big shelf in his room. We took everything off of it and put it in the kitchen. And everything in the kitchen, we put on his big shelf, including the toaster. Yes. They replaced everything in my room. Toaster. There, I think the Keurig was in there. Uh, Alex, you guys <laughs> don't have a Keurig. Well, the, the water heater. What's it called? Uh, the water <laughs> purifier? Uh, yeah, Brita. The Brita. The Brita. Yeah, yeah, the Brita. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I said <laughs> curry. That was just the first thing that came into my mind. Um, the bread. We had a loaf of bread. We had bread. butter in there at one point. We had, we ate toast with honey on it. Yes. In they, his room. They yes. made toast in my room. They're like, mm, this is some good toast. And we recorded it yes. and sent it to him. Mm -hmm. So it is out there in the world, a video of them eating toast in my room. Very upsetting. Got honestly. crumbs all over his bed. Yes. I oh, came yeah. home at 2 a.m. and just my room has been replaced. So I had to spend like half an hour like fixing it. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Chloe, what is your wacky prank? I have... This week. Oh, I I have a really good one. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. my my fact is that Hunter is always drinking milk. He's a very avid milk drinker and he... he Always, always, always gets a strawberry milk with his orders at the dining hall. That's true. It is. That is. A I fact. get. I get tea sometimes. No. Oh. Milk no. only. Oh. You only drink milk. Strawberry milk. Strawberry milk specifically. Yeah. It matches your pink sweatshirt that you're wearing right now. Yes. That's true. I know. <laughs> I think they're a little different shades. No, I think you're wrong. Oh, sorry. <laughs> why? Why'd you apologize for that? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sorry you drink milk. I'm sorry I drink strawberry you, infant's milk. And you also are always drinking milk. Like, Hunter will have a glass of milk with dinner. Yes. Like, all yeah. the time. Sometimes he just gets a glass of milk and we'll drink it. One time, before we were going home from break, I had my milk in their fridge. And Hunter drank the whole thing for me. 
<laughs> she had like half a half gallon left, yeah. and I didn't know what I was getting myself into. <laughs> I, I knew it was a lot of milk, man. That's why I was going to bring it home instead of like, you know. But I'm yeah. glad you drank it. Thanks I didn't think that. there was Service. a lot. Well, thank you for that fact, Chloe. That was honestly an incredible fact. What do you think, Hunter? I, I I thought it was pretty good. Yeah. It was pretty facty. Yeah. 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 It was, it was a pretty solid fact. Thank you, Chloe. Yeah. Yeah. So I my guess. fact for this week is that Hunter has a whole arsenal of Nerf weaponry under <laughs> his bed. That's also true. <laughs> what is, wait a minute. <laughs> Surprise! I'm sensing a theme. Welcome back to Just the Facts. I'm your host today, Alex Irwin, along with my friends Chloe. Hello. And Hunter. That's me. <laughs> so, a little, a little, uh, a little pranks going on. If you haven't noticed, here, Hunter. Our actual topic for this week was Hunter Facts. Ah. But we didn't tell you that. Hunter Facts. Facts, yes. about, Hunter. facts about Hunter. So about now Hunter. we're going to tell embarrassing stories about you yes. on the radio. Yeah. Live. That, no. That's what happens when you don't stay for April Fool's on <laughs> April Fool's yeah. Day. Yeah. Hey, what about her? No. Well, I needed an you. accomplice. <laughs> <laughs> so my fact is that you have a lot of Nerf weaponry under your bed. That's true. You, you keep a whole arsenal. I have like four Nerf guns and like three pistols. Mm. One also time, nerf. Hunter dislocated his toe, and I just think that's embarrassing. <laughs> it's not embarrassing. <laughs> is it? I didn't do it myself. Yeah, you did. It was Hunter's fault. There was a big lead up to this, and in the all same, caused by Alex. And Irwin. in the no. same day, he no. bulldozed his girlfriend, which is me, to the ground. <laughs> Which is also caused by Alex. No. No. Here's a fact. That's Hunter's fault. <laughs> yeah, Hunter, why were you running? Yeah, sorry. Sorry, I was going Mach 7 in the parking lot. You really were. Fighter jet style. <laughs> <laughs> Should have made, like, noises as I was approaching. Yes. <laughs> so, Hunter, now that you know the actual topic, do you have a fact about yourself you would like to share? I'm trying to think of one. Yeah. Uh, Fun fact. Oh, fun fact. Fact. We might have already had that, actually. Fun fact. I'll say it anyways. I ate a light bulb. Oh, yeah. We did, talk about, we did talk about this. We did talk about that. We did talk about yeah. that. We also ate cereal upside down and almost choked. Yeah. Did he eat and cereal drowned. upside down? You eat a lot of things, Hunter. A lot of things you probably shouldn't be eating. I'm a hungry there. boy. I also ate a lot of change. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay. That, 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 that's our fact now. You ate change? Like, yeah. actually, like, swallowed like, it? Yeah. Hunter. Like, there's probably at least a quarter and a penny in my stomach. <laughs> Like right now? Still? No. Like you haven't gotten no. rid of it? Yeah. <laughs> it's just chilling in there. It's just, it's just vibing. <laughs> I mean, no, we didn't get it like my stomach pumped or so anything. So like, but. if you go to like the airport and you have to walk through the metal detectors, <laughs> will it go off? No. <laughs> I've probably gotten rid of the change by now. I would sure hope so. What was the last time you ate change? I was very young. Yeah. I was thinking he was going to say like yesterday. <laughs> I don't think it was a quarter. I, I think it was a dime. I think a quarter is too big. Well, that has been just a fact. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed our April Fool's episode. Oh April, April Fool's Hunter. I hope Hunter's Hunter. okay. No, are you okay, Hunter? You're a little sleepy. No. Okay. okay well, that's been just the fact. I hope you all enjoyed exploring the world of facts with us. We'll see you man. next week. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you, Just the Facts, for all those wacky facts this week. Up next is an exclusive interview. Hello everyone, it's me, Jackson DiCarlo, bringing you a very special interview for High Noon Friday, the first in quite a while. Please, introduce yourself, special guest. Okay, I am Ivani Vassalev, a professor in the Department of Politics in International Affairs here at SUNY Fredonia. I teach uh, political science classes and also classes for another program that is International Studies. Very nice. Well, welcome back to the show. It's been, I think, since September you've last been on the show. It's so great to have you back. So uh, today we're going to be talking about the Brown Bag Lunch Series. Is that correct? 
Yes, it's correct. And I thank you very much, the Fredonia Radio Station, for inviting me. We're it's a pleasure you. to be here with you. So for those who don't know, what is the Brown Bag Lunch? So the Brown Bag Lunch is uh, a lecture series that it's going on at the university for several years now. It is um, always sponsored by the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences and also by the Carnahan Jackson Funds for the Humanity. And uh, every month um, we bring um, a guest speaker uh, to present research, uh, ideas, debates on a given topic. And this entire year, academic, 2022-2023, we are focusing on higher education. Mm. And every month, uh, we have a guest uh, discussing some aspects of higher education. And um, this is going what's going to happen um, Wednesday, April 6th. Uh, who's coming in on Wednesday, April 6th? So... Wednesday, uh, April 6th, we are going to have, uh, as a main guest speaker, um, a visiting professor. Um, she is a faculty member from Bulgaria. Oh. But, that, yes, from Eastern Europe. And um, she is here with us for this spring. Uh, she is sponsored by the uh, Williams Fund. Mm -hmm. And she is a also a political scientist specializing in international politics, especially that area of the world, Eastern Europe, and particularly the Balkans region mm. that um, students may remember or not, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Balkans wars right. soon after the mm -hmm. end of the Cold War, 1990-1991, when the former Yugoslavia split, mm -hmm. collapsed right. mm -hmm. in Serbia, Croatia, Slovenia. And she is specialized also in that part of the world. But Wednesday, mm -hmm. uh, Professor Lyubov Mincheva is going to speak about uh, higher education in the European Union. Oh, very interesting. It's going to be an in-person event. Excellent. But she's going to mix her own presentation with the videos mm. uh, explaining some elements of higher education in Italy and in other countries in the European oh, Union. Oh, very cool. Um, so how would you attend? You said it's in person. Where is it located and what time is it? So um, we, after many months being online because mm -hmm. of the global pandemic, we right. are returning to the Williams Center and it's going to be in the room S204, right? S204? Yeah, S204. Okay. And uh, it's, it's always an open event. Uh, students, faculty members, staff here at the university, mm -hmm. and also public in general. Um, so residents of Fredonia Dunkirk, yes, they are welcome as well. Um, and the, the, the presentations in general, what uh, happens, mm -hmm. right, once we start at noon, is that uh, the presenter is going to talk, uh, discuss the topic, and then we have a question and answer session. Oh, very nice. Yes. Um, so that's for next week on Wednesday. Um, who's coming up in May? You said it's a, it's a monthly event, correct? We have a speaker coming in May as well. Yes, and it's going to be the last for the 2022-2022. Um, Twenty two, two thousand twenty one, two thousand twenty two series, right? Right. So uh, yes. Um, so in May, always the first Wednesday of the month, um, the guest speaker is um, our provost, uh, the university provost. I would mm. say the head of the the academic affairs division. Mm -hmm. That is Dr. David Starrett. Mm. And he's going to talk about uh, changes uh, in higher education. Right. Very interesting. Um, is there anything else you'd want to mention about these events or the series in general? Well, I, I always encourage uh, the students, uh, everybody, in fact, to participate. But it's right. students because it's a different way to learn, to get in touch with important topics. At this time, it's going to be higher education in another continent, mm -hmm. but we have topics focusing on the United States, like 
for example, next month, Dr. Starrett is going to talk about the higher education in the United States. Right. And I would like to say that we already are preparing the 2022-2023 right. <laughs> uh, lecture series. And um, we are now, we have a committee, a planning mm -hmm. committee, and we are brainstorming, so to speak, mm -hmm. about the topics that we are going to present fall and spring. Very awesome. Well, yeah, be sure to check out these events, folks. They are the first Wednesday of every month, including next week Wednesday in Williams Center 204 at noon. Um, and then the first Wednesday of May. Uh, so thank you so much for coming on. It definitely sounds like a very interesting topic. Oh, thank you so much for inviting me. It's a Anytime. pleasure. All the best to you. Back to you, Alex. Thank you so much. Be sure to attend that event, listeners. Next up is a new segment, Nature Speaks. Hello, this is Ash, and you're listening to Nature Speaks, where one nature nerd goes outside, looks at some stuff, and then tells you all about it. If you were outside earlier this week, you probably noticed that it was decidedly unspring-like. It was a little depressing. We all know that the threat of snow looms over us until May, but once you get even that one 60 degree and sunny day, like Thursday, the cold weather is very unbearable. I would like to provide some hope for you all in the form of one of our most beloved backyard birds, the American Robin. You've probably seen it in your backyard, black head, very big orange belly. And seeing this bird for the first time in spring is usually a good sign that warmer weather's on the way. I took a walk in the wood lot in early March though, and I saw something regarding robins that was pretty confusing. I was in the field near the stadium, and you know, we got lots of worms there. Robins, it's a robin hot spot. But it was a little early in the season, and I saw a robin, and then I saw another robin, and then I looked around and I realized all throughout the field, there was probably upwards of like 25 robins. Um, I was confused. I wanted spring very badly, but it was also early March and it's really not fun to get your hopes up and then it snow all the time. I just didn't know what to make of it. And I was also confused because you're used to seeing robins in ones or twos hopping around, nesting, et cetera, et cetera. But I had never seen a herd of robins, you know, that's normally how like crows or starlings move about. So I decided to do a little research to figure out, was this spring-like behavior or was I being duped? And it turns out I was being duped. Robin migration is very complex, but I'm gonna break it down very, very simply and probably exclude some very important details. But generally, there are two strategies that robins take um, when it comes to winter migration. Number one, you can go south. This is mainly for one reason, worms. The worms burrow very deep underground in the north during the winter. So you gotta go where it's warm. A lot of times this is what the female robins will do because good winter nutrition is very important to, for being able to lay eggs in the spring. The other strategy is to stay north. If you do that, you're gonna have to modify your diet, lots of evergreens, berries, etc., etc. But the reason for doing this is to protect your old territory. You know, if you go south for the winter and come back, you don't know if it's still gonna be there for you. Or to wander around and try to find new territory. And a lot of times male robins will band together in these nomadic troops and travel around and try to scout out new territory. And these groups stay together all winter and then once the female robins come up from the south, then they disperse into pairs and ones and twos, and then we get spring and mating season, etc. So I was right. I shouldn't have been hopeful because this large group of robins was most likely all male robins doing their winter trip, trying to find some new territory. But then after spring break, I came back and the robin behavior and the presence of robins on campus was very, very different. Even if you go outside today, look around. They're everywhere. They're on the ground hopping around and they are either by themselves or with a mate. And this is a very sure sign of spring. Another thing 
that shows us that yes, yes, it is spring is the morning time. The sounds that you're hearing from the birds are so different than they were over winter. In winter, you might get some chickadees, some crows. You know, you're not, it's not very active. But then in springtime, in mating season, you're gonna get all these different types of calls, all these mating calls. And it's a really, really beautiful sound to wake up to. Even if you're not a morning person, it makes mornings a bit better. So it is springtime, says the robin. I know the weather has been discouraging this week. And I know that we tend to use our calendars and our weather apps to keep track of the seasons. We can always learn a bit more about our ecosystems by paying attention to what's happening outside. Again, my name is Ash. And remember, nature speaks. Are you listening? I am listening. Thank you, Ash. Now let's bring it to Josh with the international news. Good afternoon, folks. I'm your host, Jazzman Josh, with this week's international news. Russian gas pipelines continue pumping despite Putin's decree that he would not send gas to Europe unless they pay in rubles. He made the decree as a counter offense to the anti Russian market, but the lines were still pumping this morning, past the expect expected shutdown time. A spokesperson explained on behalf of the Kremlin that the gas shutoff would not affect shipments that have already been paid for. And after failing to claim many major Ukrainian cities since the beginning of the war, Russia is now changing its focus from northern Ukraine to the southeast. As Russia redirects its troops to cities such as Mariupol, Ukrainians are now reclaiming villages that link Kiev and uh, Chernev. Earlier this week, two rocket launchers had been found in the dumpster of a residence just behind a California middle school. The two AT-4 bazookas and a MK-69 practice grenade were found by a community officer of Riverside County's Sheriff Department under the service of a search warrant. According to an Instagram post from Riverside Sheriff Bomb Squad, quote, While all items were expended, these items do not go into dumpsters. These items are generally not legal to possess, although there are some limited exceptions, end quote. And it is assumed that these items belonged to Christopher Whetstone, age 41. What Stone had been arrested Tuesday for grand theft and tampering with a motor vehicle, among a couple other charges. Say, remember that Ever Given container ship that blocked the Suez Canal last year? Well, the Ever Given sister, the Ever Forward, has been stuck in Chesapeake Bay for about 19 days now. No, this is not an April Fool's joke. However, the situation is not quite as problematic as it had been with Ever Given. Ever Forward is not blocking the channel, and other ships can go around it. The United States Coast Guard and the Maryland Department of the Environment are currently planning to get the Ever Forward back afloat after a failed attempt at freeing the ship with five tugboats. And now, folks, you know what time it is. It is now time for the Jazzman Josh Word of the Week. The Jazzman Josh Word of the Week well, this week is... Waggle. That's right, folks. The Jazzman Josh Word of the Week for this week is Waggle. Waggle is a verb, which means to move up and down or side to side in a short, rapid manner. So one could waggle their eyebrows as they waggle their finger at a wacky chef repairing beef wagyu. Thank you very much for listening, and have yourself a wonderful day, Fredonia. Stay warm and be cool. Jazzman Josh out. Thank you for the updates, Jazzman Josh. Finally, we have something special for you all that are listening. It's time for trivia, slightly after 12. On this segment, we test the minds of students here on Fredonia's campus for the chance to win glorious prizes. This week, we have three wonderful contestants ready to win big by answering some questions. Please, introduce yourselves. Introduce yourselves. There we go. Hello. Good job, Jackson. Um, my name is uh, Jonathan Zareski. I am the chief engineer here at Fredonia Radio Systems. Hi, my name is Natalie Wilkes, and I host the Insider Universe Radio Show here at FRS. I am Riley Briard, and I am the business manager of <clears throat> FRS. All righty. You know the drill. First one to shout their name after the question is read will be able to take a shot at answering the question. Each question is worth a point, and at the end of the game, the person with the most points will be declared the winner. This week's category is... Hey, Jackson, what is, what is this week's category? 
not sports, but it's it's wacky and crazy because it's, it's a funny one. Hey, yo. It's a funny day, guys. But you know what this sound means? You know what this <laughs> the sound effect is standing in for that I don't have? <laughs> it's standing in for the uh oh ooh, turbo trivia time theme. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, wow that's so wacky that's happening right now this is our most produced show and you can tell we take it very seriously <laughs> uh oh it's turbo trivia time everybody run here it, hap- here it comes which of the following is not true about the hit 2013 film turbo <laughs> <laughs> is it A the screenplay of the film was co-written by the director his recently divorced wife and their malacologist neighbor a malacologist is someone who sell- studies mollusks Is it B, it stars Ryan Reynolds as the titular Turbo. This was the second DreamWorks animated movie in 2013 to star Reynolds, the other being The Croods. Is it C, the director of this movie also directed Captain Underpants, the first epic movie, and voice acts in The Boss Baby 1 and 2. Or is it D, Samuel L. Jackson, Snoop Dogg, and Maya Rudolph were each nominated for Best Voice Performance at the Black Reel Awards with Sam Jackson winning, which is not true out of those. Riley. Riley. I want to say B. It did not have Ryan Reynolds in it. It did star Ryan Reynolds, which is... No, it didn't. <laughs> it did. I, I watched that movie. As the titular Turbo. I I was blown away. I was looking up. I was like, like the, I can't... I didn't think, like, the fact that the main star was who he was was a fact. But it was, <laughs> hey, uh, yes. Johnny. Johnny. Um, I'm going to go with... Uh, I'm going to go with C. C is true. It is incorrect. He did actually uh, write that movie... Oh, well, not that. Uh, he uh, did direct Captain Underpants, and he did uh, voice act. Not in the show, though. No. He's not in uh, the show. He's in well, the well, well, he, well, here's the thing. April Fool's. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's D. Natalie with a chance to steal. It's either it was right. co-written with his divorced wife and malacologist neighbor, or that Sam Jackson, Snoop Dogg, and Maya Rudolph were nominated for Best Voice Performance. I'm going to say D. D is incorrect. Um, they were all nominated at the Black Reel Awards, <laughs> and Sam Jackson did win. Um, the one that was not true was the thing about the divorced wife in Malacologist. <laughs> I thought that was just weird. It had to be true. Exactly why I wrote it like that. <laughs> well, how else did they know about snails? Um, I don't know. Uh, fun fact. <laughs> despite earning $282 million on a $127 million budget, the studio announced that the film was a financial loss. Costing the studio over $15 million, it was the second film in two years that DreamWorks Animation had lost money on after Rise of the Guardians. The math doesn't make sense to me on that. It doesn't. Is is Rise of the Guardians the one with the owls? No, that's uh, the Guardians of Gahul. (laughs) Rise of the Guardians is the one with Jack Frost and Santa with the arm tattoos and says naughty and nice. Oh, yeah. Well, that um, one makes sense why it made a loss. The reason why they said it was a loss (laughs) is because it didn't perform well in international markets. Um, And they claimed it was like an, I think it was like an insurance thing. They like claimed they lost X amount of dollars. And then years later, they said we lost another $2 million from it. Seems a bit sketchy to me, but I don't know. Yeah, also, was... Snoop Dogg, he, I mentioned he was in this movie. He plays a guy named Smooth Moves or something like that. Yeah, he does. Um, he also wrote some of the music for the the thing, and he premiered one of the songs at E3 in 2013. That's awesome. <laughs> Very strange. Uh, beautiful. Well, question number two. Which of the following is not one of the colors of the Wiggles? Is it A, red, B, green, Johnny. C, Johnny. It's B, green. That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you so well versed in wiggle knowledge? I have, wait, do you not know the Do you not know the colors of the wiggles? They just got a. They just had a Come concert. On. I was just gonna say they have these. They're like on tour right now, right. and the audiences are majority like adults that are like our age oh, that yeah. watched them. Yeah. When they can were you kids. Can you name all the colors? I what? can. It is yellow, blue, red, and purple. That's correct. That is correct. Yes, with purple being my favorite, Jeff. Yeah, Jeff. <laughs> he was a sleepy one. Yeah. He, he was. He, yo. Do you remember the Jeff. name Wake of the, like, the mascots? Like, I remember it was like Dolly oh, or something. Wags the, the dog. Wags oh, the dinosaur. <laughs> the Captain Daisy? Feather Sword. There's so Captain much Feather wiggle Sword. knowledge I was unaware Johnny was of. at the show. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was not. I, I fortunately left um, th- my, my wiggles aspirations behind me oh, with, wow. along with my childhood. <laughs> That's so sad. Well, but, fun fact about the wiggles. They generally produce music every single year and by 2014 had released approximately 50 albums and videos and sold over 30 million copies. Mm -hmm. Can I give you a a brief... I just found the Wiggles Wikipedia page. Oh, no. (laughs) Um, I just found a timeline of what Wiggles were who. Um, There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight, nine, ten different people have played the Four Wiggles. Um, Murray Cook, Jeff Fat, that was his last name, Jeff Fat. <laughs> Anthony Field and Greg Page were the original Wiggles. However, Greg left mid two thousand seven. It looks like, mm-hmm. and it was replaced by Sam Moran. Also, I think there was a gray wiggle here briefly. <laughs> I'm <laughs> discovering a lot. But Anthony Field, the original Blue Wiggle, is still playing the Blue Wiggle. Yeah. The that's rest crazy. of them have left at some point. Didn't didn't one of them, like get it like canceled or something? Yeah, n- no, one of them like I think one of them passed away from cancer. Well, it was. I think you might be thinking of Greg, the Yellow Wiggle, yeah. was diagnosed with MS, and um, that's why he had to leave. Right. Okay. But he actually is on tour with them right now. Oh, that's all. great. Yeah. Okay. Um, right now we. That. We have just left the New Wiggles era, and we are now in the um, expanded lineup fruit salad TV era. Well, as we should be, <laughs> of course. The, the, the Wiggles new- iceberg goes favorite deep. Song. Anyway, here's the next one. Uh, what is the third letter of the alphabet? D, C, B, or A? C. C <laughs> is B. That's incorrect. Wait, I meant like the answer was <laughs> Johnny. Johnny. B. B. Is correct. It yeah. Is. <laughs> <laughs> I would just like to. Oh no, I'm gonna contradict for, myself. For, for those of you, for those of you not being able to see, which is most of you, because this is radio. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Riley has the most defeated look on her face. <laughs> because you all know what I meant when I said oh, of course. C. <laughs> I didn't write this one, but I played along. Fun I fact. was. I just stared into blank space. I was so confused. <laughs> Lie. Fun fact, many people think think of the letter C as a useless letter because it simply copies the sounds of an S or a K, but that's utterly untrue. The letter C is actually the 12th most used letter of the alphabet behind some other consonants and most of the vowels, but not U. This is because U sucks. <laughs> Thank you, whoever wrote that. <laughs> Whoa, we're on uh, air, Jackson. <laughs> All right, Alex, here's the question that you vehemently fought to keep into the script. Yes. <laughs> I'm very proud of it. All right. Question number four. Which is the correct answer? Is it A, answer, B, answer, C, answer, or D, answer? Natalie. (laughs) Natalie. I'm going to say D. D, answer, is incorrect. I'm sorry. Hold on. (laughs) Wait. May... May we ha- may we see the question? Because <laughs> no. I feel like they're nope, all nope, spelled nope, different. Nope, they're all spelled nope. exactly the same with the same capitalization. Okay. Just one of them is correct. You, can, you re- can you repeat the question? Yes. Which is the correct answer? Is it A, answer, B, answer, or C, answer? Can you use it in a sentence? <laughs> what Johnny. is the correct answer? <laughs> Johnny. <laughs> Johnny. Johnny, A, answer. A, answer is correct. Yeah! <laughs> this is not on. fair. <laughs> I don't know how I do it. I think it's an April Fool's joke that Johnny it knows all the answers. It takes a fool answers. to beat a fool. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I didn't get the first one. <laughs> well, the fun fact about this, High Noon Friday producer Chloe is in the lead with the amount of times a producer forgot to identify which was the correct answer before trivia started. That counted as at three because she forgot one of those answers today. You also forgot one of those today when you had to reshift your question. I did, but now, now I'm in either second or third. Okay. But Chloe's still in first. Wait, I, I have a question. <laughs> yes. What was that question? <laughs> what is the correct answer? Yeah, yes, but like, <laughs> what, what was that? Just like a crapshoot? I was that, explaining. <laughs> I'm like, there's no setup. There's nothing clever about it. And he's I, like, no, it's funny. I'm like, one of them is correct. <laughs> He's like, that's the, that's the setup. I'm like, no. I don't know. I think we got plenty of laughs out of it. Anyway, <laughs> question number five. What is your name? Johnny. <laughs> what is your quest? To seek the Holy Grail. What is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? Is it A, 14 miles per hour, B, 24 uh, uh, miles uh, per uh, hour, uh, uh, three, 40 miles an hour, or four, uh, <laughs> 53 uh, 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 miles an hour? African or European? I don't know that. Hey! <laughs> do, I, do I get, get the a, point? You get a swallow point. Do but I? G- there is a there is a question in there. Oh, the, oh, you were actually answer, answering. Oh yeah, I, I researched it. Oh okay. So what is well, the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? For this case, European. Okay. Uh, 14, 24, 40, or 53 miles an hour. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, it's still me. And whoever wants whoever to buzz in, you okay. got the swallow point, but there's still a point to be earned here. Okay. Riley. Um, Riley. I'm going to go with B. B, 24? Ye- no, I want to go with A. A, 14? Yes. Okay, that's incorrect. 
<laughs> you know what? I'll go with B. B is correct. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna do it. No I was way. gonna do it. No so way. How many times? No way. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> Twenty-four miles per hour is the correct answer. Do you know how many times in middle school I've had teachers pull me like aside during tests and they're like, "Your first answer is always correct," and then you change it. <laughs> Curse them because they've cursed me now, and I. <laughs> Riley, I apologize. <laughs> I was like, 24 is just too fast, man. Johnny's got like 10 points right now. I learned that <laughs> parrots can go at 40 miles an hour. That's, yeah, that's pretty that's good. That's crazy. Anyway, uh, it is pretty crazy. here's the difference between an African and European swallow. The European swallow migrates seasonally, while the, Afri- the African variety does not. They also live in different continents. Yes. <laughs> um, who's seen Monty Python and the Holy Grail? Okay. Indeed I have. I'm disappointed in half of you. Yeah, that's us. Otherwise. Watch it together? <laughs> Watch party. It's, it's, it's a screaming at the station. Max <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, well, oh, number six is next. The question is, what was used to lure High Noon producer Jackson DiCaprio to his pretend, he's okay, kidnapping <laughs> last year? Was it A, Cool Cat DVDs, B, a break from working on his movie, C, a Happy Meal and some Loganberry, or D, another 10-year-old Mickey Mouse hat? Johnny. Natalie. Oh. Rock, paper, scissors? Yeah, Rock, paper, sure. scissors. Be- be- wait, wait, two out of three, or are we just doing We're just one? Just straight. Just, just one? one? Okay, ready? Yes. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh, oh Natalie wins. Dang. Say C, because you can never go wrong with a happy C, meal. C, happy meal is correct. That is correct. Look that's at that. Logan. And Logan. And an what toy did you get? Um, There was no toy. It was a ruse. Well, yes. that's disappointing. <laughs> there was... Uh, Free Logan buried inside and also and Happy Meals also. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's what the sign says. Fun fact, Jackson was eventually rescued by the other High Noon producers, Alex, Hunter, and Chloe. Another fun fact, this is the question Chloe forgot to write correct on. <laughs> <laughs> Another fun fact, uh, my head is 11 years old. Oh. And this Easter will be 12. Wow. Oh, my gosh. You should throw a party. Next question. <laughs> Here at FRS last semester, we had a Don't Be Mean week where the entire e-board had to be nice (laughs) lest they write a compliment to the insulted party. How many violations occurred because the e-board couldn't help but make fun of Alex? (laughs) (laughs) Is it A, 2, B, 9, C, 5, or D, 4? Question. Yes. Does this count the nice ones? No, it does not count. It does not count the nice ones. Okay. Um, can you, I'm sorry. How many times did Alex get insulted? (laughs) Um, I'm going to say In the nine. week we specifically said we would not insult him. <laughs> I'm going to say B9. Johnny yes, is Johnny. saying it. And he's saying B9. Incorrect. All right. Natalie. Natalie. Five. Five is correct. I, yes. Fun I, fact. I was pretty good that week. <laughs> the Don't Be Mean week started because the e-board just simply couldn't help but make fun of Alex. He received the most compliments that day. Yes. I remember I, I, would, I was doing so well. And then at one point, um, you slipped up. Yeah, you were like, "Oh, I just did this." I'm like, "Who asked?" <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny, and I felt so horrible afterwards because it was just so knee jerk. Like I just immediately it was on him, and I, I just like, oh. I and that's I, why we had the be nice. Movie. I think I think I only did one against you. Yeah, doing the. Um, I think uh, it was. Johnny, Jackson, Mel, Yasel, and Max, yeah. if I remember correctly. I believe Which so. Which makes sense. I definitely had one. Yeah. I didn't have any in there. I, so. I don't, it was me, I think that I was just like, um, because you didn't have the mask on for your Fallout, um, Fallout right. cat costume, yeah. and I was like, what are you supposed to be, Sleepy Boy? <laughs> <laughs> and you Max, that as a Max called me cringe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, next uh, question. Number eight. Hey, welcome back to Just the Facts, where we talk about facts, just facts, no opinions, just facts. I'm your host today, Alex Irwin, here with Jackson DiCarlo, Johnny, Natalie, and Riley. Today, our topic is trivia. What's your fact, Riley? My fact? Oh, no. Your trivia fact. Oh, no. Oh, no. Um, 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 can I be last? (laughs) Fun fact, Riley is last. (laughs) (laughs) Natalie, what is your trivia fact? Um, fun fact. Fun fact. Fact. Some. Give me a fact. Mm, this is a fact. Uh, I work at Starbucks, and I see probably the same group of people come in three times a day. Mm, Not gonna a, lie. That's, that's, that's a, cool a fact. fact. That's how a many? Fact. How many is in this herd of people? Um, I think I've only seen Johnny at Starbucks out of 
And oh, I see Riley at Starbucks sometimes. Mm -hmm. yeah. I also, <laughs> wait, second, part two to my oh, fact. fact oh. um, I know many people on this campus by their name and their Starbucks order, and I know nothing else about them. <laughs> and I think that's kind of a funny way to walk through life. Not yeah, gonna lie. That's, that's okay. Yeah, that nice is, fact point you know, for that. Yeah, nice fact point. That was pretty cool. Thanks. But have, uh, what was. Oh, it's too late. I, no, it's. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a fun one. <laughs> Let Riley get her back on. Okay. My last name means fog in French. Fog? Nice. Oh, okay. yeah. That's a pretty it's cool word. It's the French cool. word for fog. Yeah. That is pretty cool. Well, yes, indeed. the actual question is, though, what was Wait, the first wait, topic we ever did? Oh, well, you didn't ask me my cool fact. I had a really cool fact. Well, we were just going to do I a point for like, whoever gave me I have a, a really fact. cool fact. you got to ask them all. <laughs> okay, fine, then. What's your fact, John? My, my cool fact is Yo Gabba Gabba. They had it. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was thinking about this when we did the Wiggles. Um, Are you, did you look it up? <laughs> yes. You can't me, look it up. No, 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 I didn't look up the fact. I just looked up the album because there are a bunch of different artists on this album, and it's crazy. Is that the one with My Chemical Romance it's on it? It's the one with My Chemical Romance, Weezer, Jimmy Eat World, Taking Back Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> um, Yo Gabba Gabba Goes Punk. Devo. Oh, Devo. <laughs> Devo, George Clinton, Weird Al, Yankovic. George Clinton? <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, Jack Black. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. It, it's okay. stacked. That's, that's, that's a stacked. That's album. pretty stacked. That's a good yes. fact. I'll give you a fact point for okay, that. Okay, but Thank actually, the real, the real question is since we're running out of time, what was the first topic we ever did for Just the Facts on High Noon Friday? Is it A, food, B, chips, C, animals, or D, Montana? Riley. Riley. C, animals. Animals is correct. That is a true Just the Facts fan right there. Yes. Thank you, Riley. Yes. Uh, fun fact it was one year in March. Of us broadcasting just the facts. It's our one year anniversary. Also, fun fact it's I gave easy. Alex his first ever fact because he didn't have an animal fact. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, Well, you don't need animal facts? And I rattled off three. And I was like, Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that was funny. such a long time ago. Do question nine. Yes. Question number nine. Our High Noon Friday script is six pages long, believe it or not. Oh, it's seven actually right now. Oh, really? Yeah. Did you? I don't know. Oh, well. oh no, it's just it's the spaces at the end. Six. Uh, Sorry, go ahead. Okay, yeah. Uh, six pages long, with this one being especially wacky. How many times is the word producer listed in the script? Is it A, 1, B, 5, C, 9, or D, 12? Natalie. Natalie. B. B, 5? That's incorrect. Riley. Riley. C. C, 9 is correct. There are nine producers in this script. Uh, fun, <laughs> fun fact. This trivia has become half April Fool's, half the producer's lore. Uh, we hope you have learned much about the shenanigans. That is the High Noon Friday. Friday. Speaking of which, former High Noon Friday producer Matt Gelato may have left here last year, but what <laughs> room has he been secretly sleeping in this entire time? Whoa. Is it A, Jackson's office, B, the archives, C, Graham Command, or D, under the desk in WCBF? Is it Graham? Johnny. Johnny. Um, I would say because he was, was looking around the room. I was thinking <laughs> I was thinking because he is the uh, the WCVF program or he was a WCVF program director that it would make sense that he would be underneath the desk in WCVF. That is incorrect. <laughs> good guess, good guess. He was educated. Good, educated guess. Natalie. 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 Jackson's office. That is incorrect also. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say Graham command because I'm suspicious. Do you see him in there? I'm I'm suspicious of where he could be. There's a door. He's Everyone look at that door. Because <laughs> here he comes, Matt. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, my <laughs> God. I would have freaked out. No. <laughs> I was like, I was going to say, is he behind me? No, we messaged him on Discord last night, and he said he was in the archives. <laughs> anyway, um, fun fact. Uh, here's a quote from Matt. It says, you can't see me, but I'm there all the time. Trust me. That's, That's fun really fact. uncomfortable. Yeah, Number, 11. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Number 11. Number 11. Why did the chicken cross the road? Best answer wins a funny point. The worst answer wins an unfunny point. Who would like to start? Me. Natalie. Um, to be undercooked at, at Willie's. Oh. Call that that's out. Good. Yo, Somebody about, like, lost gotcha. a tooth in the Willie's chicken. Like, oh, chipped my his tooth gosh. In Willie's chicken. I don't I've know had undercooked possible. and I've had a bone. So. Oh. All right. Oh, geez, it's me. Yes. There's so many. Um, We're on time constraints. Well, well, here's the thing. Riley. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say B, to say hi to your mom. Oh. oh. Um, I'm, I'm going to say uh, to get away from Colonel Sanders. Okay. Uh, I'm giving it to Natalie. Yes, Natalie yeah. gets the funny. Who gets the unfunny point? Johnny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I, well I was, I was going to say something else, but it was going to be mean. I was going to say 
to get to the ugly person's house. Knock, knock. 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 Who's there? The it, it's the chicken. Heard that one. <laughs> Very nice. Ooh. All right, I guess I still get the unfunny point. Yes. <laughs> Here we go. Last question of the day. On the official SpongeBob wiki, how many errors are listed for the episode Fools in April? Is it A, 3, B, 8, C, 17, or D, 29? Johnny. Johnny. I was not paying attention, but I'm just going to say C. C is correct. Yo! Nice. When in doubt, go with C. <laughs> Fun fact, these errors include continuity errors, animation mistakes, and coloring mistakes. This episode is also Bubble Bass's final appearance in the series until 11 years later. He would later return again in the episode Plankton's Good Eye and would stay on the series as a recurring character since then. Wow. You forgot SpongeBob oh, lore. bubble blowing babies. That's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I believe, uh, Jackson, you have the results for that this I wacky, do. wacky trivia. Would you like to share that with us? I have this wacky, wacky trivia in last place. With six points, because we're doing golf rules, because it's April Fool's, <laughs> is Johnny Zareski. Yeah. <laughs> Second place is Natalie, and in first no. place is Riley with par of three. Congratulations. <laughs> Woo! You know what they say, seized get degrees. <laughs> <laughs> that they do. Thank you so much for coming on the show, folks. Yes, thank you so much. That was quite a wacky, wacky time. And right I now, I'm just buying fool. time for Jackson to switch over the music. I appreciate it. Are you You're ready? Welcome. Yes, I am. Do like a big leadoff sentence. Uh, April Fools. <laughs> <laughs> right, I turn on mic one. Get the mic one. Get there. Keep going. Bring the script. Hello? Hello. <laughs> okay. I can't see you now. I, I don't know. Go. Read it. You're host too. Oh, hang on. Here, Mike, it's Mike 5, actually. That wraps it up for this week's broadcast while he gets at Mike 5. Thank you so much for joining us. And tune in next week, same time, same place. High Noon Friday has been brought to you on WCVF 88.9 FM, The Voice, WDVL 89.5 Inferno on the web. High Noon Friday is assembled through collab. Oh, it's Mike 4. Sorry. He's, he's yanking the brand new mics across the table. He's got all of them. Hi, <laughs> New Friday. It's assembled through collaboration of Virginia Radio Systems members. Our producers and scriptwriters are Jackson DiCaprio, Alex Derwin, Erwin Herwin, Chloe Koala, and Hunter Holt, that man. Ford Operation is performed by Jackson DiCaprio. Sports is prepared and read by Trevor Unlimited Howard. News is presented and read by Casio Fonsaca. And Ska fan Josh Ribs for dinner. And weather is prepared and read by Jules Hop. Oh, you're on mic three now. Mic three. Mike 3, Mike 3, Mike 3, Mike 3, Mike 3. Tune in next week for I Did Friday. Get read my script. I'm Alex Irwin. And I'm Jackson DiCaprio. Thank you so much for listening. And be sure to tune in next week, same time, same place. Have a great weekend, Fredonia. April Fool's. April Fool's.